teams chosen for Origin 1 in Adelaide in 10, nine days' time. Well, there's headlines galore, isn't there? Who's in, who's not in, who's missing um, form. Who's the one that... Pick and stick. Who's the one that should be there that's not there in your eyes, James? It's always about that. Can I volunteer? I'm going to say Go Dan, Dan Gagai. Yep. Because it's very un Queensland like yeah. to drop a guy who's always done the job. And I know apparently, I didn't see the game at the wee, weekend, but apparently Connor Tracy gave him yeah, an absolute he bath. He did. But even so, Dane Gago has always done the job for Queensland. So I'm really, so I, I can understand Caelan Ponga not being there because he's mm. obviously had the head knocks. He had another HIA in the weekend. He obviously came back into the game. But um, I can understand the concern over Caelan, particularly in, in Origin where it's such a violent, brutal uh, game, but Dane, I'm surprised by Dane Gago. As good as the hammer's been going, he's been going really well. Mm. Dane's always done the job for Queensland. Yeah, well, 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 Dane was in a, a similar situation last year where his club form um, defensively wasn't it's where where all the at the level that um, he set, and then he went into to, to Origin and 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 did what he's always done for Queensland. I think. The Ponga one intrigues me. Do you think it's a? Do you think it's one of the? It's it's a reaction to the treatment he would get. Like there would be too much tactics around. Let's put the ball up. Have Kalen catch it in the middle of the field, and we go and belt the living daylights out of them. Do you think that that is is the is the fear that it's just too much? Has to be a factor. Too much mm. of a carrot to give to New South Wales to say come and get our man because you know you get stuck into him early um or you get you know one slight knock on him he has to go off and then you look to their bench and you go okay well now what i would say it's probably a little bit of that uh, well a lot of that and a little bit of how good Reese Walsh has been going i mean he has been outstanding this year yeah. Reese Walsh he's so he's just electric i've got that as the bigger uh, factor do you have that as the secondary factor i think that's the secondary factor i think if Kalen's Reece. healthy Kalen would have been the fullback no yeah. doubt, he did the job. He won man in the match in game three last year. Yeah, best player on the field. So you don't so, think he's you don't think he's he's fully healthy. Like I, what what more does he need to do to be healthy? No, I th- sorry, I think he is healthy, but I think the health issues he's had and the ongoing concern over that. Given if he doesn't have, have a HIA at the weekend, plays the game, gets through unscathed, mm. I reckon he probably gets picked. But because of the weekend, because again he copped a little head knock, went off the field. Um, and that lingering concern about him moving forward, I think that's why he's not there. And that's the, the interesting thing about where this is all evolving, James, about HIA and you, you've done, and well done, by the way, on another international award you picked up for your podcast with uh, talking about it all. But how selection, how it's done at the selection table, yeah, how it's all, I don't know if it's twisted well, 180, but it's certainly twisted it a certain way to away from the norm. It, it has. And if this is a reason, then de-incentivizes the individual to be upfront and honest mm. and to go and get the help that they need. So I, I really hope, I, I understand, you know, when the game's on the line and and you've got to make critical decisions, like big decisions, and you've got to forecast the future about around, around people's um, injury concern, concerns and the potential for a HIA, but um, the Best diagnosis for a concussion at the moment that's available world worldwide mm. is a person's honesty. Mm. So you've got to wonder whether this might play into that. Um, but I guess if you want to be truthful, then you know, do you put state of origin above your future self for a young man? Mm. Well, you you, you lived in the I, I, Well, yeah. I know what I'd choose as a young man. Yeah. I'd choose playing for my state. You've yeah. said that repeatedly about like, how that, the choices that, you made at that, that time were that, you. That, that's who I who I was, and yeah. I I make no apologies for having that stance. Mm. Yeah, but mm. I mean, it's not as if they're going, "Oh no, Kalen, no. who we're going to pick?" They've that's got it. a kid well, in well, there who yeah, was that, just. That's it. With, with Reese Walsh's level of performance, playing in a winning team, mm. more more like that, they've they've won a lot of their games. Brisbane, that that certainly helps. He's been an absolute standout revelation there. Um, Who do you think New South Wales would be more concerned about facing, Reese or Kalen? Yeah, that's it. I, I, I think. I, I, I think I, the silence says it all there. I, I think, think there is a, 
a lesser. Well, I think they're going to go after them both. Yeah. They they would have give Kalen Ponga the treatment. Yeah. And they'll give Reese Walsh the treatment as well. But who do you think would have put more fear into them, or who would they be more concerned about at the moment? Do you think? I think Kalen would have been a. Um, a carrot, almost a carrot for them, as you said. Put the yeah. ball up, whack him hard, hit him early, um, shake him up, you know, mess uh, with his head yeah. a bit. Well, you're not going to uh, do that to Reese. Yeah, I think based off what we've seen this season, um, I'd prefer to be coming up against Kalen Ponga. Mm. Just back to the Gagai one, though. The, you, you're talking about form on the weekend. Murray Toilungi played in a side that leaked 66 points. He's not exactly Fair coming point. in off a hat trick and a, yeah. a, a 300 metres hit up. Th- th- there, are, there are a few. Other you know selections within that Queensland side that have shocked um, Xavier Coates mm. over to Alangi, like mm. Christian Welsh, Capewell. You know, especially when you look at the the makeup of their side um, with the edge forwards that uh, Queensland have, have chosen with Fafita and Tom Gilbert. That Fafita is quick, but he's a big body. And if you look how New South Wales have set up their team. Especially um, the, their bench and their back row. It's it's a quick bench. And it's a quick but it's a quick back row. Well, the, the New South Wales big bodies on the edge of the centres. They're bigger than the do, do the you edge not back row. Do you not They've think, gone for mobility there, haven't they? Do you yeah, not think Dave Fafita has played so well this year? Yeah, he has. So they almost had no choice, but particularly when um, he ha- he has played. When he Felice has, was yeah. ruled out when Felice because Felice Kafusi would have been there, right? But yeah, he's of suspended. Course. Yeah, and Tommy Gilbert. I'm told. Billy Slater loves Tommy Gilbert, just thinks he's made for origin. Yeah. And he's obviously played as a 13, I think, this year at the Dolphins. But he has played in the mm. edge before. He played in the edge at the Cowboys. Mm. And and he's one of those guys who you talk to people about Tommy Gilbert and they tell you he is a guy who's made for he's made yeah. for origin. I, I'm I'm not I'm not disputing that fact. Yeah. But also they'd say exactly the same thing about Corey Horsburgh. Mm. And you can't fit them all in. You'd say exactly the same thing about Ruben Cotter and Fatasu Malawe. Mm. You say I think ten. Things... I think ten. I'll start though. I think yeah. ten. I'll start the game with one of those two. But, I think Flegler might drop. Might drop back to the bench. What, what, would you not think Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Capewell and the one percent is that he brings? Mm. Did, did he not have an injury concern? I thought. I don't know. I could be wrong. I thought he had a little niggle, but I could, you know, I could be wrong. But I just think Dave's play, Dave and Tommy have played so well this year that they they've leapfrogged those guys. As I said, if Felice Cafuso was fit, Felice yeah, he's a, been, he's, a, yeah. he's a he's a big absence for them. What about that though? I mean, it was done, wasn't it? I know. There are, I've never been out in in that yeah. arena. James, you can talk more of it. But Red missed descending, playing against, yeah, his former club. I yeah, think he that's knows what it was. Like, like, yeah. But now I, he's missed his seventh. He's going to miss in total seven weeks, basically at the halfway point of the season for the Dolphins. It's a lot of time on the sidelines. But I just think uh, Felice would have approached that game. He would have known he would be on the chopping block, as yeah. Melbourne liked to put it. And he's gone out there and gone, I'm going to get you before you come and get me. It's as simple as that. Like, not even fighting fire with fire. Mm. It's I'm going to launch before you even think about launching. Yeah. And I know, yeah, well, hindsight's a beautiful thing. And rugby league players are wired up a little bit differently. And sometimes logic and common sense and, Mm. you know, thinking about future events. And we said it ourselves with, you know, things like head knocks. We're not thinking about our future selves and yeah. in the in the real long term there. But also when you're playing eighty minutes for your club, like it, everybody on the planet goes, just don't do anything stupid today. Mm. Uh get through because I've got origin coming up. Oh, and only what did it take? Sixty seconds? <laughs> Easy said than done. Yeah. With the just get caught up in that. Yeah. And and then uh, yeah, that's 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 football. That's footballers. That's people that People of extreme and people that like to take risks, and mm. uh, it, it won't be the first time it happens. It certainly won't be the last. Victor Radley is another classic example. Oh. How much? Yeah, you know, I could believe he didn't get ten. Well, he sitting been there on the off. sideline, that should have been that's that a send off. He hit by someone. I think if you go automatic send off. I think if you go back to this time last year, yeah, he was actually on the cusp of origin selection, and he got suspended as well. Then yeah. he went to, no, he pledged himself to no, England no, as well, was, didn't he? No, no, that was post. That was yeah, post. Yeah, it was after that. Yeah. But yeah. At the thing for Origin 1 or Origin 2, if I recall, Origin 1 last year, yeah. if I recall correctly, he was in the conversation and he got himself suspended as well. Now, speaking of red mist, uh, New South Wales have come up with a selection surprise somewhat. Tavita Pangai Jr. will apparently start the game 
and you, you're talking of collisions and you're talking of intent, you're talking of people trying to hurt each other either legally or a little bit over the legal edge. Well, Tavita kind of springs to mind. Here's Brad Fittler talking about his selection. Yeah, well, I think we had to make big calls. Um, we had a few back rowers, Angus and uh, Liam Martin, who hadn't played much of the year. So, uh, again, some back rowers in there who are pretty game fit. Uh, Tavita Pangai as well. I've sort of been a fan of Tavita's for, for a long time. He's a very skillful, tough bloke. And I just I like what they're doing at Canterbury at the moment. They're not, you know, they're not winning every game, but what they're doing is they're not giving up. And just mm. watching what he's doing off the ball excites me that he's becoming a much better player. And, you know, if Tavita can fix up those parts of his game, the talent part is already there. So you watched him yesterday play, James, Tavita Pangai Jr. Were you, you watching that at Acor Stadium thinking... Geez, Tavita, there's an origin player in front of my eyes. He played incredibly well and he came alive, um, mm. especially in the last 20 minutes. His number numbers at the end of the game were sensational, the best by far of any Canterbury player. Um, I don't think Freddie Fittler's quite telling the truth. What about what you, what why he's in the team? Yeah. What's the truth? I think he knows why they lost last the last series. They got bashed. They got bashed. Yeah. Yeah. And Queensland played a style of football. Dane Gay guy punched Matt Burton in the head. And there was a melee. Yeah. And I think New South Wales were shell shocked by that. They didn't predict that it was coming. They had they they were caught unawares by that. And I don't know if they had the uh, personnel to fire back. So if you actually go back and watch that incident, like poor old Matt Burton's basically on his own. Yeah. yeah. I think it was a premeditated attack. Yeah. And that's fit. all is fair in love and war, right? Mm. Queensland got the victory. We're yeah. not talking about that, that one particular incident. Mm. But I think Fittler's looked at that and gone, I need to be ready for that. Yeah. And who do I want on, you know, you talk about those hotheads and, and who you want out there when, you know, stuff goes down. Can't say the S word, but stuff. I think you can, oh. shall we? Yeah, oh, you go for you it. Know, when, when shit goes down. There you go. Who, who, who do you want out there? I, I think want, they, I want, I, I want I want Pangai Jr. there. Yeah. I think they live and die on those two calls, though. They're going to live and die in this game on Tavita and Hudson Young. Because yeah. if things go pear-shaped, as it can occasion with Tavita, as it can occasion with Hudson Young, it will cost them the game. But you, but went, they well, you went through to win the game. You look at okay, well, let's, have, let's have a look. Flagler's the same. Flagler's the, yeah, yeah. It's the same, I agree. So if you don't have someone to stand up to Flagler and say, let's have it. I've got to say that, Jimmy. You talked about his game yesterday. I spoke to I went and spoke to Tavita after the game in the dressing sheds. And he With said, your blue blazer. He said at half time in that you remember blue blazer. He said at half time in that game yesterday, Sorrello gave him an absolute spray. And what said, for? Because he was playing no good. Yeah. So his first forty was so bad the coach gave him a spray at half time. Now he did come out in the second half and he responded and he was outstanding. And he is a game breaker. He's a guy who can turn this game on its head. I think as I think as well, the the benefits of Pangai Jr. is he can play the role of that specialist. 15 minute player mm. where if you look at guys like Payne Haas um, guys like Junior Borlo Cameron Murray, Murray Isaiah Yo, they're, they're, they're effective because they're on the field for 60 plus minutes now Pangai Junior can play big minutes but usually it's in stints so I think what you need to do to complement those players yeah. you, don't ne- you don't need the best front rowers like that play 60 minutes plus there's a space in the game for a specialist 15 minute front rower now I think Pangai Junior's job will to be to go flat out a hundred miles an hour for fifteen minutes, give it all you, and then mate, don't you worry, we'll put you back on for another fifteen. But all there's that that's part of his role, and the other is don't let Flegler and Lindsay Collins and Gilbert and Carrigan and Tino. all the, and to when Tino comes on, don't you dare let them stand over any of our outside backs. Well, here's where the beauty of it is. And this is what I'll be paying very close attention to if they're on um, on the field at the same time. Tavita and Tino. Because mm-hmm. after that Matt Burton one, Gold Coast played Bulldogs last year and those two lined up each other. Yeah. Like you would not believe well, well, Tavita they, said before that they, game, I want they, to go into they it. They did it yesterday. And what, yeah. one of the best things that, that I've seen was um, Tino had a couple of incidences with Reed Marnie. Yeah. And Pangai Jr., there was a couple of taps and he just went straight at Tino. <laughs> and then the, he actually, um, Panga Jr. got a penalty. Yeah. For, I think he got lifted. And then the tap came again and he just went, give me the ball again. And he went mm. straight at Tino. So when you've got a guy that's got the capability 
and the balls to do that. Hmm. That's t- that 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 for me probably tip Freddie over the line to say I'm going to have him. Amongst those guys too, yeah. Jimmy. I was, you know, obviously after the game went got um, Tavita. Well, the reason went and got him was about the Tino tackle, and. So he just said, I don't want the bloke suspended. I want him playing Origin. Now, he didn't know at the time he'd be there as well. He'd had a half an inkling, but, though. You know, the other thing is they've got a, he's got a great relationship with Payne Haas, Tavita. You know, when Tavita's been through all those difficulties in the last few years, and he has had some. Yeah. I mean, at one point he said, I want to help Queensland prepare for Origin when Kevy Walters was coach. I don't know if you remember those comments. At one point he said, I don't want to play for New South, New South Wales. I want to play for Tonga. So it's oh, a long... Oh, you look at you. you par- mate, fact. Mate, yeah. you're pa- paraphrasing. Don't worry, Here it's all coming go. out tomorrow. Here we go. Oh, it's yeah. all coming out tomorrow. The Queens it's coming out the Sarva. Yeah, yeah. Next, next, to, next you'll be to, talking about our Brian Toto and Jerome Lewis. I wanted to play for Samoa last year. I spoke to Tavita about all this stuff today and Tavita said, look, I'm a changed man from what I was three years ago. I said some stuff I regret. Uh, and uh, Greg Alexander, who was the the New South, New South Wales co-selector, actually criticised Tavita pretty heavily about four years you ago about digger. what he said. You dig, well, mate, you hey, digging up old wounds. Brent hey, the Palisade internet, mate, nothing you're disappears disgrace. off the internet, you're Jimmy. You're a disgrace. But I'll <laughs> say this about you know, you, you, Tavita. You, where's your journalistic Tavita integrity, Tavita is a different hey? man to what he was when he said that a few years ago. But you're going to bring it all up ago. anyway. But we'll dig you're it up and we'll roll it round and we'll put it in the mix, Master Jimmy, and it'll all come out tomorrow. Are you just on Payne Haas, by the way? Could you? Is there a world in which a prop plays eighty minutes in Origin? Because if there's a guy, Paul Gallon did it. Paul Gallon did it many years ago. Like a a guy that size lasting eighty minutes, he's he's got the capacity. Yeah, it's unnecessary. He can do, but no, you you don't need to. Interested what you're saying there, because you can imagine Borlo and also uh, Tavita swapping roles, similar Mm. bodies, you know, and Payne can stay out there for as long as. Payne can. Yeah, it's an it's, interesting balance yeah, as opposed but, to the norm. But I guess, you know, the reason Payne Haas does it for Brisbane is because he's far and above their best front row. Well, he's the best front row in the competition by... Yeah. You, you can know, do it at by, club level. By a multiverse. Hmm. But, you know, you look at some of those players coming on and they're not as effective. But when you look at that bench and you want to give some of those players game time, you know, perhaps even see Isaiah you know, move into the front row position and Cameron Murray come on at lock. I, mm. I think Isaiah Yo did that a little bit in the World Cup, or how they shared that role. Um, Murray's played a bit of edge, I think, for New South Wales. Yeah, well, Murray, Murray maybe. But obviously, for, for Zell and Hudson Young um, are there. And then, you, yeah, you you probably think about rotating your middle forwards as opposed to your edge forward. Well, so. know, would you want to, Would you want Payne playing 80 minutes? No. I mean, the well, best you thing is you drag him off, on, bring, him on, yeah. bring him back on when he gets yeah. a bit of... Yeah, you, don't, you just don't need and, to. Where yeah. where do you see the role for Nico? If everyone is like he's he's great to have on the bench in my opinion because mm. he covers for injury in well, about four it. different positions. Yeah. But in, injury or New South Wales are down with yeah. fifteen. Where does he come on? He can maybe play a spare role, well, but potentially uh, a third half. Yep, and look to create something. Or as the game unfolds, if you look back to last year's series, Queensland did a great job of shutting down Nathan Cleary. Like they shut him down really well. They ma- managed to, um, the, or you could see there was a real focus to minimize his impact on the game. Now, if they see that and Luai's not demanding that ball, mm. there might just be a, a straight swap. But there's, you know, a high probability that Nico Hines doesn't get on the field. But Queensland perfected that yeah. having that fourteen on the bench who'd come on as play play in the middle and just play as a small sort of. Um, Lock almost. Mm. And Nico could play that. I mean, a ball playing lock if he has to. Um, you know, they'll find a way to get him in the game because I think you've got to get him in the game at some point, particularly if no, you're you losing. I think oh, you do, Jimmy. No, He's got no. to have a – you've got to get – No, no. Well, you're no. going to use, no. use him, sit him on the bench for 80 minutes. Potentially. You can't do that, Jimmy. Come you on, course you can. Why do you no. have to put a player on? Well, because he's a good player. At some point, you're going to need him. Yeah, but if Not things are going the way you well, want to. I think to. you will. Why, why, Just, do you ha- why do you have to use him? He's a good player, Jimmy. You've got to get him in the game at some point. What's he just having him there if you don't, don't intend on using player, him? But, yeah, he's not in the team. Well, I think Nico's a better player than Matt Burton, wouldn't you? Well, with due respect yeah, but he's a good player. To, to Matt Burton, he's a good player. But I'm using your but he's logic. Not there, but he's not there, Jimmy. Yeah, but Nico we, Wines we, is because he's a better sit, player. We would sit, yeah. Well, you could argue that Matt Burton is a better utility. Well, you could argue it. You mightn't be right, but, but you could argue <laughs> it. You don't think Matt Burton's a better utility? I think Nico's a better player. Yeah, I think Nico's a better player, but okay. I think Matt Burton's a better utility. Well, Nico, plays, Nico plays plenty of positions. Like what? One, six, seven. Oh, yeah, seven. so you're telling me if Tedesco goes down, they'll bring Nicker Hines on at number one? Probably, I, I reckon yes. they would. 
Yeah. Uh, are you looking at the same team sheet as me? So who are you going to shove in the centres? You're going to shove Nico in the centres. Yeah. For the way, he's going to get in the game. Well, you know what I'd do? I, if <laughs> I had, Matt, if I had Matt Burton on the bench, you'd go, Latrell, you pop yourself back at fullback. Matt Burton, you come on at C, uh, uh, centre. Okay, well, can you do that with Nico Hines? Because Latrell's a better fullback. <laughs> well, I'm saying, why can't you put Nico Hines in the centres? Because Matt Burton's a better centre than Nico <laughs> Hines. That's Matt, true. I'll give we're, you that. We're, we're going around the house here, but <laughs> a little bit. There is a chance yes. that Nico Hines doesn't get doesn't get on. We've seen that before. Okay. He doesn't have to get on. They're not just going. Okay, they're up by eight. They're up by four mm, with yep. five minutes to go. It's get him like, in the game. Get him in the game. Get him in the game. <laughs> oh, hey, Dave Riccio said he's got to get on. Get, quit, hold up. Oh, we've run out of interchanges. <laughs> Bollocks. What are we going to do? Uh, someone fake a HIA. So get, get him in the game. On. He'll be in the game before then, Jimmy. Surely they'll have some sort of idea well, about how they're going to use him, don't you think? They they will, but it'll okay. be situational. And if that situational doesn't eventuate, then he won't get. He he, he may not get on. New South Wales have an embarrassment of riches of ball players. So you've got Cleary, Yo, who is basically a <laughs> six foot four halfback. The way he plays for Penrith, um, not so much halfback, but he's creating so much yep. with the ball through the middle. You got Luai, who can play that role. You got Nico, who can play that role. You got Tom Travojevic, who sometimes plays second receiver for Manly, setting block plays up out the back. It, it's a little bit different to Queensland in that regard, but can you have too many cooks? Do you yeah, I, I guess you, you can, but New South Wales' um, plan, I believe, will be about effort, not necessarily fine tuning. Attacking skills, let the players go out there and mm. and do what they're capable capable of doing. And you know, you, you speak there, Isaiah Yo. He would run more than he passes. Where mm. a usual five eight would pass more than they would run. Yeah. So th- there is a little bit of a difference, and they do have that. I think it's a, a plus point. To, they have a run fair. They go out with a run first mentality, and then like let's look to move the rock. And when you look at some of those bigger forwards that uh, Queensland have picked. Like your Gilberts and your Fafitas on an edge, mm. if you can get players passing to one another to generate movement within the rock, not necessarily line breaks, but there's intricate details. So people often look at super coach. You're not going to get any super coach points for this, but yeah. if you can pass the ball to tie up, say, you know, a, a Lindsay Collins and a David Fafita in a tackle, well, that means Tom Flegler's got to go and defend yep. where uh, David Fafita was. And he's got to travel all the way, and you've got to keep them moving and things like that. That's that's the advantage of players that can can pass the ball, like um, Isaiah Yo. Um, even you know, even Payne Haas plays with the ball a little yeah, bit yeah. as well. I th- yeah, we'll we'll see that shape from from both teams. One and another thing that when you see Latrell and Tom in the centres, I can't get out of my head what happened in Townsville a couple of years ago mm. when they used those two guys, and Freddie and the, the coaching staff basically said free reign. Yep. In terms of don't stay on your own side, go and find it. And a lot of the times they ended up on the same side together. It was just so destructive. Now, they were running downhill that night. They had a great kicking game. They had all the possession. They were high intensity in defence, bending Queensland back. But, man, that's another weapon they could use if, if they choose if, to do it. If you said to me, where's New South Wales' advantage? That's what I would say to you. Because, uh, look, Val got a bath from Stafford Tower at the weekend. And I love Val. He's a great player, but... Uh, Staffatoa carved him up, Deluxe. And Hammer, Hammer so hasn't played centre for God knows how long. He did play an origin game at centre, but he hasn't played there for a long time. So, And then you're up against Tommy Trevojevic, who's been a bit reinvigorated at the weekend. Luttrell has obviously been Luttrell all year. So I look at that and I think, I look at the two teams, and I think that's the one area that concerns me as a Queenslander, that if those two blokes cut loose and play like they can, then we found you're a in with a hope. It, we found it, a weakness it, here. It wouldn't, <laughs> Jimmy. It, it's, it surprised me after that game. Um, that more um, coaches haven't gone with that tactic. Like yeah. rugby league always fascinates me and how we um, how we arrive at the now and how we arrive at the present and what we did in the past in terms of you know a left side center and a right side center. There was a point where it was inside and outside center and yeah. the centers would both play on the same side of the field. That's changed over the years. I thought after that game, that was the blueprint for we're going to see this new style of football mm. where we're going to play you're going to have a number three or four, but basically we're going to play with two fullbacks. Now, that didn't eventuate, which really is surprising. It's part uh, of that, though, because you have got two elite 
well, fullbacks who are playing that position as that, opposed that's to correct. But most clubs at, don't have two well, centers like that. Look at a team like the Roosters. Well, they do. Yeah. And there's, you know, a, a team like the Dragons with Zach Lomax. Or, or you could mold someone into that role mm. as a as a second fullback. That's really surprising, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it I think that game you're alluding to, it was Tedesco and Trebojevic. I think this time it will be Tedesco and Latrell, mm. given that free roam. Surely uh, they just free... drag that blueprint out, don't they, and just play it again? Yeah, but, but... I think I think if you look back to that game, Latrell sort of stayed on his side and Tommy was allowed to roam, yep. where I think this time it will be just... And Tedesco to... stayed through the middle. Pretty Tedesco much. stayed... Obviously, Tedesco is going to play fullback, mm. but I, I think we'll see Latrell given license to go and hunt that ball and hunt, mm. hunt for involvement. It, and it does depend on conditions as well. You can't really play that style if it's a wet, dewy night on a really slick surface, which Adelaide Oval will be, as opposed to that night, warm night up in Queensland where it was dry as and it was just ripe for quick, fast, ugh, an amazing performance. But, yeah, kind of stick out. It's still, as you... still scary when I look at this team and I see Latrell and Tommy. Yeah, in I thought centers. I'd put a bit of it fear in me a little bit. Finally, finally. I can't believe there was ever a debate over Tommy not I can. being in the team. Why? He's Tommy Trevojevic. Because the way he was you going, he wasn't trusting himself it physically. Man. And yesterday we finally, Melbourne he's, Storm, I'll grant you a few weeks ago at Brookvale, he was, he looked physically back and then it kind of. It's Tommy. I know. You it's just Tommy. pick him. I know. Anyway, I know. It looks easy now. Argument. And then he came up yesterday, but he was impressive yesterday. I got, at, you know what? I can't wait for the, the day after Origin. We can all go, you know, well, you know what I'd have done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's what'll happen, Jimmy. Because of course, both these I can, teams I can I, I can pre record <laughs> Thursday the first of June's news yeah, yeah. two ways. <laughs> two ways. Yeah. And just roll it out. Do you could pre pre record Thursday the first of June's <laughs> news today and but Freddie and Billy know that, Jimmy. They both made decisions. I know. It's they, all they, they just part of the theatre and the fun decisions. and games, isn't it? You know, Billy's overlooked Gagai, right, and, and Ponga. Yeah. And Freddie's gone with Tavita and Hudson Young. And they've made decisions that if they lose, they'll be criticised over it. Yeah. That's the way it is. Anything else on Origin, guys, before we move on? We've covered it all, haven't we? Covered every possible scenario, pretty I, much? I think so. Who's the ref? Don't know yet? No, we don't know yet. Oh, I'll tell you what. What? Let's hope. <laughs> what? Zindins. That Hip drops. the referee yes. and the well, sorry, no, not the referee, the bunker. Ah, yes, keep their nose out of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Jimmy, Did you end up on your back in commentary gonna, on the weekend? What's not going to happen? Uh, there'll be something during this series that'll cause drama from the bunker. Of course, there will. Of course, you think a player will stay down for I think a there'll be a half... simbin or oh, mate, a hip simbin. Drop Jeez, or... mate, you, you, you hardly lost a drama score. And that'll be a, a <laughs> will simbin. there be a pass off the ground like yes? Oh, <laughs> oh yes. I thought that pass was okay, actually. Anyway, let's move on. Did his elbows hit the ground? That's <laughs> yeah, the key. No. Well, there no. you go. Play well, on. If you like that sort of stuff, go and watch rugby. It was a touch of rugby about it, wasn't <laughs> it? A touch. <laughs> you got Hamish McLennan's number by any uh, chance? We'll give him a call, see if we can get some tickets. Union. What odds Hamish McLennan comes out the next week and says, I want to sign Payne House again? Uh, Absolute like, certainty. At some point. Like, put that down for the June Cam 1 Murray. news bulletin as well. Yeah. Have, <laughs> it'll be Payne House, Cam Murray, <laughs> yes. and someone else. And Hamish McLennan will open his big trap, yeah. and someone will dive straight in and write the story. Paddy Carrigan wouldn't look out of place in a 12 jumper for um, the Wallabies as well. No, he's locked up long term. No, he's locked up. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, uh, let's get into mate. a bit of club footy. Um, <laughs> impressed by Josh Schuster, and you could see guys out of that game in Canberra, I could see the benefit of what Manly, and I was trying to say it in this particular studio over the last couple of weeks about the resilience building exercise that he was on. I was, and it, look, not finished product. It's one game, mm. but that as a Manly fan, that's what you're looking for in terms of Josh and what he went away and worked on. It, it is. And you can, as an individual, you can take it two ways. So you can go, what I've been doing has worked. So I'll can continue to do it. Mm. Or I'm now at the fish, finish line. And go back to what I and well, mm. I've done. I've done the hard work. Now it will like yeah. they can't not pick me. So my attitude can go back to perhaps what it was, or you know, the weight issue that has been well publicised. He's become so important for them. I spoke to Sebes last night um, about Jakey because obviously Jakey got ruled out of Origin. We were talking about Tommy, and he said what what changed for Tommy was actually having Josh and Jake playing again because it frees him up. He said just completely frees mm. Tommy up to be Tommy. So. That's how important Josh Schuster's become for that team because of what he does for others around him, not just for himself. But the challenge for him is to keep doing it. I think we all know that, yeah. Josh. We've seen flashes before where Josh Schuster's looked amazing 
and the next week he's just had a Barry Crocker. So and that's hard to do. Like yeah. th- it's not like we're saying this coming from a, a a point of like, well, we'll just just keep doing it. It, yeah. it requires consistent dedication, Discipline. a conti- consistent application to all those little things that have got him in this position. And then you know when like I think a, a good mentor for him would be Ola Kawatu, who has spoken publicly about um, his new regime, his yep. discipline that he's applied to his life. And I, I think, yeah, you know, I, I know what it's like in that position where you think, oh, I've, I've arrived now, but it, but it's mm-hmm. not. You've got to keep doing those little things that have made him perform and get back in the team and, and stand out. Mm. What happened to Canberra, by the way? Mm. Well, I didn't see the game, to be fair. Yeah. I, I was at the other too game, confident, was, perhaps? Yeah. I, like yeah, I think we, see, I think we see a bit of that, and complacency can can set in, and you know, scored we, first. Well, they won six well, in a row at the just, beginning of that. Yeah. Five so what, when you look at the, the 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 level of competition, when when you go on the winning streak like that, and the same happened to South Sydney, I believe, mm. is you can fall into a bit of a trap of all we need to do is turn up. This, the, especially when you play against lesser opposition. Mm. So you look at um, South's come up against Para. Well, yeah. all, all we have got to do is just turn up and win. Right, Canberra playing Manly. Well, all we just got to do is mm. turn up and win, right? Well, no, because this, this, and it, you, you can't switch that attitude. You can't get shocked into yeah, being yeah. like, "Oh, hang on, we're in a game here all of a sudden" because you're too far behind. Yeah. So, and it's difficult. And I've done that, and we're all guilty of do. All, all former players would be guilty of underestimating the opposition and not, not preparing. For, as you would for the bigger teams. I, I think there's a touch of that about this. Yeah, it's just another sign of how level the comp is yeah. this year. I mean, if, if you've, as simple as getting Josh Schuster back, transforms Manly. Yeah. Um, and if Canberra off their game and Manly are on, which they haven't been lately, but the, the switch got flicked, they're on, Canberra a little bit off, and they got they got flogged. And we saw that, you know, Saturday night, what West Tigers. I was just about to say that. Yeah, they've, like four weeks ago, if you said to, I said to you, Reedy, oh, Tigers are going to score 66 oh, points no. the next time they play at Leichhardt. You've well, the was a week before had been yeah. really good. And then they turn up again at Leichhardt and get absolutely pelted. Um, Apparently, Toddy, Toddy Payton's spray at halftime was oh, he should, one of the better ones. His spray at full time should have been yeah. just as bad because they were – I thought they were ch- – look, I thought pre-season. At the end of last season, I thought when they framed the market to the end of last season, I thought the Cowboys should have been favourites to win the comp. Mm. Wow. But this year they've yeah. been – they've just gone backwards at a rate of knots. And it's unbelievable how, how – Bad they've been it, at times. It is this bizarre, year. isn't it? it? It's crazy. It, they, I think back to that game against the Sharks a couple of weeks ago. They played it Thursday night, and they had everything to play for that night. They were dreadful. Yeah. And I didn't know if they could get any worse. They looked like they fixed it up against you know, a good win against the Roosters. But then to save that up oh, was. We should give the Tigers some credit though. I mean, they've had. A, oh they've yeah. Had a, they've been the whipping boys, the perennial whipping Absolutely. boys, of the time. on and off the field, and. You know, the way they played the other night, Luke Brooks, so happy for Luke Brooks, his 200th game to play like that. Mm. Um, Coruscant. Coruscant. He's the difference. And, and they're learning how to play with him. Yeah. We called that game uh, Tigers against the Dogs and it just looked like Appy Coruscant was on another level mm. and everyone else was like, the other 12 players were like, yeah. hang on a minute. Who, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When, when did we sign this guy again? <laughs> like, it's like Reedy not... playing on a weekend. A like former NSL player playing mate. with his Division 3 over 45. Let's yeah. go there. Yeah. Division 2. I missed a penalty I did too. Oh, oh, yeah. Devastating. Well, the keeper made a world-class save, to be oh. fair. It was the top quarter. So it was the on world-class On target, you've got to be okay with that. You've never seen a save like it. The bloke was horizontal, one hand. Anyway, it's not about me. That was me at about midnight on Saturday night, actually. But anyway... But yeah, really happy for the Tigers and those fans showed up at Leichhardt Oval and, you know, hopefully they continue at the Tigers because they, their yeah. fans deserve some success. They've got so many supporters. Well, all, well, you could say that about, you about can, any club. But, but they've I, been long suffering, Jimmy. They've got oh, a long time. Try being an Everton success. fan, mate. So, <laughs> you better um, get relegated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dragons I, as well on Friday yeah, night. I, yeah. I think just on a different tangent with the Tigers, I think the Leichhardt Oval factor and just all the stories about the, the Tigers fans in the scoreboard, like it's a big part of what rugby league's about. And we, you know, we look at these new stadiums. If that's anywhere else, like if that's a, a core or mm. the new one at Allianz, we we just don't get that. Mm. Um, I think it's something that we should remember as we progress. 
You want suburban grounds back, Jimmy? Uh, I, I, I never wanted them. I hate suburban grounds. Why? Facilities are terrible. Oh, here we go. Go terrible. on. What what facilities? Press press box. Here we what, go. What what facilities? Toilets. Wi Fi. Beer queues. Yeah, beer queues. Whatever. Not there is something. Grounds. Don't start me. There is a Alliance substance. Is amazing. There is a substance to sitting at a suburban ground with your mates that you've gone to the footy with for twenty years and yelling obscenities against big <laughs> strangers from a distance, which is great. I've been I've done it from time to time at you, James. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, one thing I learned about Brookvale Oval was make sure I go to the toilet before I leave home because I'm sure as hell not going to the toilet mm -hmm. when I'm there. I might catch something. But there's there's something about it. There, there, something there's something romantic. about it. Well, you, something you don't romantic want, about it. No, you yeah. don't want to let go of because yeah. it's it's yeah, it, it's the fabric of the yeah, game it in is. some respects. And unfortunately, really, your life now has turned into a fashion show. <laughs> and, yeah, you can't walk down the catwalk at Leichhardt without, you know, undercover with your fancy little blazer on. I don't on. mind a boutique suburban ground. Oh, you, that but, is like boutique. <laughs> Leichhardt ain't oh, boutique. Oh, my goodness. Leichhardt, it's an eyesore. Boutique, you have an boutique eyesore. florist. You don't have boutique. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Combank. You know, give me the good suburban grounds. Hey, do you reckon like South? Do you reckon South have a lit, even though it didn't go their way the mm. other night? I was driving past there when the game was going on on the way back from Cogger, and I looked up and I went, "Oh, if Uncle Nick saw Allianz lit up in green and red from the outside like it is right now, <laughs> he would be enraged." Oh, yeah. Can that be a permanent fixture in uh, oh, the, I think not too distant future? I think they'd like it to be, but it depends on the government because they've got a great deal out at uh, Core Stadium where yeah. they're uh, basically getting money for free. Um, and if they don't get that deal at Good Allianz, why would they move? Because it's not yeah. financially in their interest. Fair enough. Well, there's more than money <laughs> to life. <laughs> Try telling that to the uh, CEO and the people who run the books yeah. in South. So Just play them, play them the De Desiree song. <laughs> money to make my world go round. Oh, wow. Hang on a minute. You do about 43 <laughs> podcasts a week. Uh, exactly. <laughs> it helps. All free, are they, Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> Read his mail. Here we go. Well, we did speak about Josh Schuster before, so let's start yeah. at Manly because obviously the big news this morning, Jake Arthur uh, has moved to Manly. Jake Arthur, son of Brad Arthur. Um, and I think we did some mail a couple of weeks ago that he was being offered a round of clubs and uh, I think there was a desire to, to actually um, find a new home. Yeah. So he get an opportunity because he's stuck by Mitch Moses and Dylan Brown at Parramatta, but also, I guess, to, to get him away from... So I don't know how to phrase this properly, but to move him away from his father. <laughs> just so he no, didn't... Hey, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> what, what phrase exists for that? Uh, just so we can... Um, well, just because of what um, the attention it brought and the pressure get it brought. Get away from the, the feeling of nepotism. And the, yes, and the criticism brought, brought from fans at times. You know, he copped some again recently. And Manly are obviously in the need for a backup half because they've got Cooper Johns, but Daly Cher Evans is about to go away on origin duty. Josh Schuster, as we said, is at the moment a bit of a week-to-week -week proposition. So... Um, you know, many were, were scouring around. There was talk about Kyle Flanagan. That never happened. Um, and they've ended up with Jake Arthur. Oh, and I think it's a great move for Jake yeah. um, because he's a young guy with a lot of talent. Mm. And having spoken to him a few times, he's a great young fella. Uh, he's been unfairly attacked at times by, by supporters. How long has he got, Paramata. really? Has he got, he's he got, got another year. So, he had so it, this he, year he, and next? next That's yeah. good. That's good. Um, and, you know, I think he's going to be really handy for, for Manly. Uh, the next month, or particularly he, in the next six weeks hmm. or so, is it? He's a handy footballer. Yeah. He's like what twenty one. Yeah, like um, you know, he steps in for Mitchell Moses and he cops all this criticism. Like the kid's young, am he's I still right? he's still a developing half. Am I right to say Jimmy he plays a bit like Daly and that he's more, he's yeah. not a, he's not a great yeah. like Daly's not Daly can run the footy, but it's not really what he's renowned for. He's renowned for getting a team around the park and his kicking game, and that's what Jake's really good at. I mean, he's a good organising halfback and get it. He's got a good kicking game, so it's a bit of a like for like. Signing, I guess. Yeah, I, I like this move for, for Jake Arthur. Like I say, I don't understand the criticism that a, mm. such a young kid um, gets as you know, a back or pass, well, which an is easy, what he is. It's just an easy target for a frustrated yeah. fan. Oh, he's only there because of his dad. Yeah. Well, now he doesn't have that problem. Yeah. Good on him. So that's mm. good for him. Uh, Freddie, we should talk about Freddie because Freddie's mm. contract's up at the end of this series. He's got, a, he's got a clause in his deal that gets him an automatic, triggers an automatic extension if he wins the series. Look, Freddie, I spoke to Freddie today about it. He's well aware that his future will be dictated by his results and results in this series. If New South Wales win, as I said, he gets another year. If they don't win, then um, there's every chance the Blues may look at another direction. I've got to say, if they do, I, I'd be really disappointed if they moved away from Freddie altogether because I think he's been amazing for, for rugby league in this state. And what the he, program. yeah. What, what he's, he's done for the game in this state, 
forget about coaching New South Wales because that's only part of his job. It's a big part of his job and it, and it consumes him a lot in the, the next six weeks or so. But aside from origin, what Freddie does for rugby league in New South Wales with his hogs for homeless and, and the coaching clinics and the profile he gives the sport, it's amazing. So I think he'll have a job basically for life with New South Wales. At least he should have a job for life with the New South Wales Rugby League, Freddie. The question is whether he should be origin coach. And that'll be determined, I think, over the course of the next month or so. If they, as I said, if they win, he'll be back again. If they don't win, then they've got a decision to make on Freddie's future. Is he going to do the earthing again? Is that part well, of the program? Well, you know what's interesting? You know, Freddie's always, his origin camps have always been open. So if you go to a training session, every player is available um, right up until the day before the game. This series, he's shutting it down. Ooh. Only today and tomorrow are open training sessions. After that, they're having selected players up. Why? I don't As know. Said, I think I I, know. that'd be the first question I'd ask. Yes. If I, I was, ask, uh, I didn't ask it, Jimmy. Maybe the players. But it's. But I'm wondering whether maybe the earth thing's going to get thrown out the door as well. I hope not. Maybe the shoes it's are staying concept. on this but series. Th- what wasn't his his previous rationale? If they can't handle a question from the media 24 hours yes. before a game, how are they expected to handle yes. the state of origin? But they lost arena? last year, Jimmy. So when that happens, things change. Jim. This is life. <laughs> yep. You know, when you win, leave it as it is. When you lose. Close it down, baby. Close ranks and got to focus on winning the footy game. Well, the good news is for Billy Slater, he doesn't have that hanging over him if he loses a series and it's like, oh, does this mean now that you're going to go and take over Craig Bellamy's mm. role down in exactly. down in Melbourne? Because your mate down there is He's gone again. locked and loaded. Well, Anything speaking else? Of, speaking of coaching, mm. it's a, look, I think we'll know one way, or the other, one way or the other on Jason Rolls this week. I believe there's talks going on today between Rolls' management and the Dragons. Um, they had they, they hit some hurdles late, late last week. Obviously, they had the game on Friday night, um, and they they're, they're getting stuck into it early this week. So I reckon we'll know one way or the other in the next day or two on whether Jason Rolls is going to take that job with the Dragons. What are the sticking points? Is it a Dragons? We don't want to give you that much control or that many years, or is a Riles going? Well, I need more autonomy. I suspect it's a bit of both, Jimmy. I reckon they're trying to find some middle ground on that. And, you know, obviously if they give him that long a deal, they're going to want uh, an ability to, to get out of that if they've got it. At some point, it all falls apart. They're not going to want to have to pay out three years of a contract. So yeah, got he's, got the, out... he's got the same manager as Cam Seraldo, I believe, that yep. successfully negotiated yes. a five-year plan yep. um, for, for a five-year deal for, for Cam Seraldo yep. because that's a situation the dogs were in at the time. Yes. I think the, the Dragons, if you're going to go for Riles, what's the point in giving him a, a two year deal or a three year deal? Because no, it ain't they'll, gonna, they'll, things aren't things aren't going to change in that short they're time. They're happy frame. to give him a long term commitment, Jimmy. The issue is, I think, um, as I said, if things don't work out, the payout, the payout, that's always an issue. And then the control is the other one, which is obviously appointing a head of football and all that sort of thing. And look, but then, I, but but what? Why would you? Because at the at the, I don't understand why you'd be, you know, reluctant to relinquish that. And get, why? What? Because what's happened previously hasn't worked. So, what, who at the board there is going? No, no, we don't want to give Riles that. We want to keep control. Well, I think they're just ironing out how it would work, Jimmy. I, I don't know if they're saying you can't have control. That, that's it, not your it's decision. Just I more think of they're the, trying the to process work out maybe the machinations of it. And I've got yeah. to say, if if it gets nutted over, nutted out this week, and the Riles, uh, the the Dragon sign Riles, I'd be surprised if Jason Riles is still at the Roosters. I yeah. think I think that could end. Forget about as of Craig I think Matt. almost immediately. I, I wouldn't be well, surprised if they they move on. That would be Rooster's call to say be the Rooster's call. We don't want and you I anymore. They'll basically say to Rolls, he is that you, Robbo's call or is go. that the chairman's call? Well, I think it's a bit of both. I think they they Nick wouldn't make that decision without talking to Robbo, and Robert Robbo wouldn't make the decision without talking to Nick. So I think they'll, they'll, my my gut feel is, and this has been changing. Um, over over the past couple of weeks, but the latest my gut feel the latest is this: they will say to him. You've taken the Dragons job. You can't do both. Yeah. Go away and focus on what you've got to do with the Dragons and we'll sort things out here. Because they, they told him, Jason Riles, last week, you're not allowed, no talkies this week. Yeah. Focus and they on also said to him Friday last night. Week, at the end of the year, it's over. But I think yeah. they're saying to him now. I Which think is a bit different to, to the Seraldo situation done. at Penrith last year, isn't it? It was, yeah. Very different. But, mm. you know, I, I think... Look, obviously, there's been no hiding. They've been disappointed with the way things have been going and the way this has played out. Yeah, Penrith are flying well, last year as well, yeah. though, and, and, and Roosters are exactly. by their own standards. Isn't it interesting what winning does yes. to your psyche? Yep. And yep. I wonder how your psyche is going to be next Thursday. But I'm we'll sure talk to be very good, mate.
And if we, even if we lose game one, there's still two more. Oh, of course. Yeah, you've got game two. They weren't at our best with our backs to the wall, though, Adam. You know I've, that. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. You're underdogs. <laughs> Always. Um, you love... You love losing. I, We're just I little have, Aussie battlers. Man. I wouldn't be surprised if you go down to Adelaide and just throw the game by 50 points. <laughs> just to set it up for Suncorp and Caxton Street and all that garbage that you go on there. I'm re- I've got to say, I'm really looking forward to seeing Tavita, Tino and Tommy Flegler Same going here. at it. It'd be a mushroom cloud over Because it could South get, Australia, and Hudson they? Young, it could get messy. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for the Monday Scrum. James, have a Pleasure. good week. Reedy, yep. look forward to reading your stuff. Thank you. That's the Monday Scrum.